Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm making a very short video on kind of the concept of event tick. And here I just made some blank actor. And when we look at tick, if we highlight it, it says event called every frame. And kind of the good thing about tick is that that means every single frame of our game. If say we're running the game at 60 FPS, that means every time that our computer has enough power, enough speed to draw another frame, the higher FPS we get, every single one of those frames event tick will run. This is really important because it allows us to make sure that our game doesn't like run out of, it's kind of weird to describe that. Not that it runs out of sync, but say we only did something like 10 times a second, so every 0.1 seconds we did something, if our game was running at like a thousand FPS and we only updated, say, our animation every 0.1 seconds on our character, you could see how like our character would move really blocky. It would only update 10 times a second when our eye can see 60, maybe 100 frames a second. That's debatable, but like, right, that would look really odd. So event tick is really important because through code, we can make sure that we're constantly updating things and nothing is ever kind of out of sorts. But kind of there's a caveat to this. That also means we don't know how often this will run. And where you can get in trouble with this is if you use event tick to do kind of, I'm not sure how to put this, just to do math without taking account of the this delta seconds here. So a good example of this is let's make a float real quick. We're gonna make a float variable. And what if I did this piece of code right here? Let's just say on tick, we grabbed float and we added just five to it. We could not reliably know how much we're adding to float every second, right? Because as we're moving around in our game, as we're looking around as different code is running, our FPS is fluctuating. Our FPS might be bouncing between 60 and 100 and 144 down to 30. We don't know. And because event tick is just, I don't want to call it unreliable, it's just we don't know how often this is actually running. This code just flat out is kind of useless. We just don't know what it's doing. Um, maybe a better example of this is let's say this was like, a, let's just add, a, I don't know, a sphere to this. And let's say for some artificial reason, we were moving the sphere through the world. So a way we could do that in code, this is a more practical application, I guess, is we could just get the actor location, um, or get, sorry, don't need to grab the sphere. We can just grab the actor, get actor location. And let's just say we wanted to move ourselves through the world. And let's just say we wanted to move ourselves 5x. And then we set our actor location, right? Just as we did with the float, we don't know how often this code is going to run. If our game is running at 10 FPS, so event tick is running 10 times in a second, we'd be moving ourselves 50x. But if our game was running at 1,000th FPS, we would be moving a much different distance every second, right? So this would be super unreliable. We don't know how much we're moving. Like, this could be super erratic. Some people might see this moving at light speed. Someone playing on an old laptop might see this moving a lot slower. So how can we account for that? And that's where delta seconds comes in. Um, so if we highlight delta seconds, or actually it's not even going to tell us, what this tells us is how long it was since the last frame was drawn. Um, a good way of thinking about this is that if we have 100 FPS, that means this delta seconds, if we had a consistent, perfectly spaced out 100 FPS in a second, because that can even fluctuate within a second, if that was perfectly just spaced out, that means we would have this delta seconds would print out 0.01 constantly. Because it would tell us the time since the last frame was 0.0 seconds, 100 FPS, you do the math and that would equal 1, right? 0.01 times 10 would be 0.1, and then times another 10 would be 1. So the way to think about this is that this delta seconds, with, within a second's time, the frames should print a second. Now that's not going to work perfectly because we're going to overlap with the next frame a lot of the times, but in theory, this delta seconds will evenly smooth ourselves out because if we add up all of the ticks within a second, they should equal 1, but then there's going to be a little bleed over into the next second, obviously. Um, but don't worry about that. So how can we use this? Well, one way if we wanted to, this is kind of like the odd way because you wouldn't normally do this, is that we could technically, I guess we could do a make here just to keep this consistent. Say we wanted to keep moving 5x, what we would do is we would actually just multiply this five times this delta seconds. 
And because if we take all of the ticks in a second, they equal one, that means that we would be moving five out over the course of a second, right? Because say we had 10 ticks in a second, and it was evenly spaced out, this delta seconds would print out 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, right? And it would do that 10 times a second. That means we would move 0.5 each tick. And since we had 10 ticks in that second, that would equal five. So this is a way of spacing ourselves out, of evenly smoothing ourselves towards towards a value on event tick. The reason why I say this is not normally how we would do it is because we have some really useful nodes called interp. Um, and we have a few of these. There's f interp2 and there's f interp2 constant. The constant one is a better way um, of learning it because the interp2 smooths it and it does some things with it. But interp2 constant has a few things here. And if we wanted to actually use the vector node, let's do that. Let's do v interp because that's vector interp. If we did vector interp to constant, we can see we have a current, a target, a delta time, and an interp speed. Well, our delta seconds goes into our delta time. That's fairly obvious. Our interp speed with constant is how far we want to move in a second. Let's say we still want to move five. And then all we need to do now is we have our current and we have our target. So this, normally what you do is you plug in your current location if you were trying to move yourselves. And then our target here, if we just wanted to move in x, this is kind of awkward, but we could honestly just add like 100 to our x. It doesn't matter. We're going to constantly move in that in that direction. So the difference between this code and the last code is now we are evenly smooth. No matter what our tick rate is, we are going to constantly move at that constant rate regardless of our frame rate. That's the difference between this and the former. Um, gets You'll get really used to using this node if you haven't used it. Um, there's a lot of different interps. There should be a rotation interp, there's a float interp, and what these nodes just allow us to do is they allow us to move regardless of tick. Um, so yeah, that's all I want to really talk about. Event tick, we don't know how often this is going to run. It's tied to our frame rate, we can't reliably know what our frame rate is, so if we're ever doing something that is just like a flat adding a value like we did before, where we just added 5 to this and then set it, we just don't know how often this is going to run, so we don't know where this value is going to be. However, if we use things like interps, or we multiply by our delta seconds, we can then know we're only going to move at that speed. So that's it for this video, and I hope to see you guys again soon.